Hello, photographers. Direct support for these videos comes from sales of my video courses or the use of my affiliate links, all of which can be found down in the description. In this video, I'm gonna show you the best settings for taking low light photos using the Sony a7 III camera. The very first thing you wanna do is set the camera to manual mode. That's the mode that I'm going to be in when I'm showing you the information here. One of the things that you need to know about taking photos in low light is that there is no best set of settings because low light means a lot of different things. So instead of telling you, you should set your ISO to this and your aperture to that and your shutter speed to this, I'm gonna show you a process for choosing the best settings for the situation that you are shooting in. That way, no matter where you are, you will end up with photos that you are happy with. And the very first thing you need to do is determine what sort of shutter speed you need to get a sharp photo. Generally speaking, you want sharp photos and generally speaking, people are taking photos handheld. And the camera shake problem is easily solved by using the focal length rule. Now it's called a rule, but this is really more of a guideline. And what it says is that you can safely hand hold your camera and get a sharp photo if your shutter speed is one over the focal length of your lens. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look. Right here, I have the Sony 24 to 70 lens on this camera. And currently, the focal length is set to 24. Now, we're not gonna use that. We're actually gonna zoom the lens out so that the focal length is set to 70 millimeters. With the focal length set at 70 millimeters, I would want to use a shutter speed of 1 70th of a second. If we try to set our shutter speed to 1 70th, you'll notice that 1 70th doesn't exist. So what you would do in this case is just choose something that's close enough. You could go with 1 60th or with 1 80th. Either is fine, but if you're in low light, 1 60th is a little bit better because it's gonna let in a little bit more light. Now, if you're using a zoom lens, the good rule of thumb is just to use the shutter speed that matches the longest focal length on the lens. That way, no matter what zoom length you use, you know that you're using a safe shutter speed. Once you have your shutter speed set, the next thing you wanna do is set your aperture. And when you're setting your aperture in a low light situation, the best thing to do is set it to the lowest aperture setting, which gives you the largest opening in the lens to let in as much light as possible. And my aperture is actually already set to that. And bear in mind, the smallest number available on your lens will be different from my lens unless you're using the exact same lens that I'm using. So F4 isn't necessarily going to be your smallest number. And that's why I say just set it to the smallest number available to you. After that, you need to set your ISO setting. And what we're doing with the ISO setting is setting it to bring our exposure indicator to zero. You see that number on the bottom of the screen flashing at minus two right now? That's telling me that the image is underexposed. And because it's flashing, it's actually telling me that it's underexposed by a lot. It might be minus five or minus six or even minus 10. So what we need to do is increase the ISO until that number comes to zero. So if you don't know how, the ISO is on the back of the camera. It's this button right here, which is on this control dial. And if you press that button, it brings up the ISO menu, and then you can spin this dial to change your ISO. So I'm gonna point the camera at my microphone as if we were trying to take a picture of the microphone. And then I'm going to increase my ISO until we bring our exposure indicator to zero. Now, one of the things I don't like about changing the ISO is that it doesn't give you a preview of what the exposure actually is. It shows you the preview of the image, but it doesn't tell me what the exposure indicator's at. So I have to kind of guess. So I'm gonna go to 2000 and take a look. And I actually got lucky there. My exposure indicator now is at zero. So once you do that, you can start taking your photos. Now. There's another way you can do this that's a little bit easier if you don't want to mess around with having to set your ISO. Because as you move around in a scene and take photos of different things, you'll see the exposure indicator changes, which means you may have to change your ISO a lot. And if you're in a situation where you're trying to take a lot of photos and you gotta take them quickly, changing your ISO constantly might be a pain in the butt. So what you can do is you can actually engage the auto ISO function. If you go back into the ISO menu, and you go all the way up, you have an auto option. And the auto will automatically set the ISO to bring your exposure to zero. 
And what that means is once you've set your aperture and shutter speed based on the guidelines I just gave you, your ISO will just automatically come in and bring your exposure to where it needs to be for a decent photo. And that means you can just run around and take photos without worrying about it too much. Now you may have noticed that the auto ISO quickly flashed at 12,800. And this is a complaint I get from people all the time when I talk about doing this in low light. And that's, oh my God, I gotta use a high ISO, I'm gonna get noise. You know what? You need to chill out about the noise. First of all, the Sony a7 III is a fabulous full frame camera that has great low light, high ISO performance with minimal noise. But even so, when you increase the ISO, you're going to get noise. But you know what? That's what you have to do when you're shooting in low light. That's just how it works. If you're not willing to shoot at those high ISOs, that means you're not willing to take photos. The last thing I wanna mention is image stabilization. And when I talked about the shutter speed earlier, I didn't mention it. But the Sony a7 III has in-body image stabilization. And that can actually help you shoot at slower shutter speeds while still avoiding blur from camera shake. Now, how low you can go will vary from person to person because how steadily you hold the camera affects how well the image stabilization will work. I would say that generally speaking, most people should be able to shoot at at least one stop slower and still get a sharp image with the help of image stabilization. So if we go back to the example, I was shooting at 1 60th of a second, but with image stabilization, I could probably drop down to 1 30th of a second and because of image stabilization, I wouldn't catch any blur in my images from camera shake. Now do be aware that image stabilization doesn't help with moving subjects. So you still don't want to go below around 1 30th of a second for moving subjects in a scene. And of course, if they're moving faster, say you're shooting sports in low light, 1 30th isn't going to be any good because sports is fast moving action and you need much faster shutter speeds to capture that. And on your a7 III, it is on by default. If you go into your menu using the menu button on the back, so it's Camera menu two, page four, you can see I have steady shot highlighted and it's on. And you might just wanna double check that to make sure yours is turned on. Now I put all of this together in a cheat sheet for you and you can get that cheat sheet at this link right here. If you have questions, let me know down in the comments. If you wanna do that YouTube bullshit to help me out, that's great, like, subscribe, whatever. But make sure you take some damn photos.